Rated M gang in the building. What's good with y'all, man? It's your boy Mo, if you don't already know. So, we got a video from WrestleMania. Shout out to WrestleMania. 10 WWE signings that were 100% pointless. Man, off their thumbnail, just off the top, like, I would have probably thought of this anyway. Cain Velasquez, bro. They squashed Kofi Kings. They squashed Kofi Mania just to have Cain Velasquez face Brock Lesnar one time. One time, and it didn't need the WWE title because nobody believed Cain Velasquez was going to win the WWE title. They buried Kofi for nothing, made him look like a fucking fluke champion, and it was just a horrible moment. It's just, I don't know, man. That, that was that was dumb. That was dumb. But now, we're going to see what other signings he's going to be talking about, man. Another one I can think of is Sin Cara, the original Sin Cara. That went nowhere. But, yeah, let's, about, let's get into the video, man. Like, comment, share, subscribe, man. Help your boy get to 2,500. By the end of the year, man, let's go. When WWE signs a wrestler, the aim is always to maximize their potential oh, and hopefully reap the financial rewards of their investment. While some WWE signings pay off in a huge way, with yep. names such as Brock Lesnar, AJ course, Styles, and even Logan Paul all exceeding expectations, sometimes signings just don't live up to their potential. Whilst yeah. on occasion this can be the wrestler's fault, as a wrestler in question just isn't as good as the WWE thinks they are, it can often be down to WWE being unable to book and present the wrestler correctly. Oh, low key. <laughs> Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 of the most pointless Let's WWE it, signings ever. Be sure it. to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Already also done, check out bro. our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Number 10, yeah. The Public Enemy. In 1999, WWE decided to sign the popular tag team known as The Public Enemy. The duo consist of Johnny Grunge and Rocco Rock were well established in the wrestling world, so this was a great opportunity for WWE to elevate their tag division. Right. Unfortunately, their run in the company would be a total flop, as they oh, weren't accepted yeah. backstage, and this yep, stemmed yep, from yep. the fact that the two chose to sign for WCW over WWE in the mid-90s. I heard about their this, brief yeah. run fell apart when yep. during a match there with the is. APA, the there two decided is. they wanted to change the match finish just before they went through the curtain. This bold move didn't sit well with anyone, especially the APA, who virtually turned the match into a shoot. Vince McMahon's reaction to the public enemy's act of defiance wasn't great either, as McMahon mm. reportedly was done with the duo following the incident, and they would be released shortly after. Damn. Number 9. Karma when oh, WWE decided man. to sign Karma, aka Hey man, for any of y'all that didn't watch Impact growing up, bro, I didn't either, but I heard about like what Karma slash Awesome Kong did back in TNA, back in, in the 2000s. Go watch her, bro. If you only seen her as Karma, do yourself a favor. Go back and watch her as Awesome Kong in TNA. Her and Gail Kim's matches. A awesome Kong. Fires were elated. Karma was a massive star in TNA, and everyone yep. hoped that WWE would finally take the women's division seriously. <laughs> to WWE's credit, nope. they managed to legitimately create a buzz not just around Karma, but also the entire women's division. However, it quickly fell apart. Exactly. She would announce her pregnancy on Raw, and this meant that she was forced to take a step back from the squared circle. Exactly, it was such yeah. a shame as Karma's exciting run had to come to an end, and whilst fans were happy for her, there was also hope that she would eventually return for another full-time run, but this never materialized. That's Number strange. 8, That's strange, Giant bro. Silver. On paper, it looked like Giant Silver was going to be a great signing for WWE. He had the size, presence, and Vince McMahon was no doubt going to try and make him a main event attraction. He would become a member oh, of the Oddities man. faction, but whenever he wrestled, he was oh, quickly exposed Lord. as he was appalling in the ring. Oh, he had shit. no notable matches and he lacked confidence when he was Yo. forced to do anything physical. He'd be released in 1999, making Silver's run a complete waste of time. Yeah. Number 7, Eva Marie. Eva Marie's first run in WWE oh, didn't exactly boy. light the world on fire. She was poor in the ring, and while she was somewhat over with the audience, it would certainly be argued that she had go-away heat. She was trash. Years after her initial run, trash. WWE made the bold and controversial decision to rehire Marie. It wasn't clear why never... this was happening. As Bro, women's when I saw her on TV, I was like, why though? Like, what did you gain from bringing her back, though? I, I don't know. To this day, division they, was they filled be with outstanding anything. workers, and Marie wasn't going to elevate the division in any at way, all. shape, or form. At all. Fans hoped that she had improved in the ring, but they were all Not wrong. All. And if anything, all. due to the improvements in the women's division, her weaknesses came up even more noticeable. Damn. She had some atrocious matches, and she even managed to have a SummerSlam match with Alexa Bliss, which was one oh, of the was top of worst matches of 2021. That list. shit was atrocious. She would eventually be released by the company, leaving Good. everyone to collectively wonder why this second run why needed did it to happen. happen? Yeah, Number no. six. Lord Tensai. 
Due to Matt Bloom making a name for himself in Japan, WWE decided to bring Bloom back into the company in 2012. Yep. Bloom would become Lord Tensai and for the most part, his prior workers Albert and A-Train would get retconned and instead WWE acted like Tensai was a completely new entity. Exactly. This character flopped almost immediately and even though WWE allowed him to propel up the card, defeating legends such as John Cena, the crowd wanted no part of Tensai's main event push. <laughs> He'd be heckled with chance of funny. Albert and this led to WWE. WWE having no choice but to derail his push. Just a few months into Tensai's return, he would be relegated to the lower mid card, and before fans knew it, he was in a comedic tag team with Brodus Clay. I mean, God that just says it. everything, doesn't it? Yo, Number 5, yo, Sin Cara. Yo. In February 2011, a WWE <laughs> oh, no. held a press conference in Mexico City to announce the signing of Sin Cara. Sin Cara, who used the name of Mystico in other promotions, was a big deal within the wrestling world, and WWE hoped that he could potentially be the next Rey Mysterio. Sin nah, Cara had problems well. almost immediately in WWE, as he couldn't grasp the WWE style. Oh, this led to a lot of his matches having severe botches, and the botches. casual WWE audience was struggling to see what all the fuss was about. They would pair Sin Cara matches with talented wrestlers such as Chavo Guerrero and even Daniel Bryan, but the connection with this audience simply wasn't there. They persisted with Sin Cara's push, but over time, he seemed to stop caring and his in-ring work seemed to regress even further. Yeah. Eventually, he was moved down the card and by 2014, he had parted ways with the company. He likes to claim that WWE wouldn't let him keep his original style and this was a major factor in why the character I flopped. I mean, that makes sense. But WWE were yet to give up on the Sin Cara persona that they created as they decided to give the character to Hunico, that. who would go on to portray the character for several years. Yeah. Number four. Yo, I don't... It's just... I get it, you know. Not every, the WWE style uh, style style isn't for everybody. You know what I mean. So it's harder for him to just flip like that, change everything he's already been doing, change what made him a star, change what made him like, you know, sought after. So I I definitely get why it kind of flopped. Buff here. Bagwell. Buff Bagwell had all the tools to be a major player in WWE. Following WWE acquiring WCW in 2001, Bagwell was a hot commodity for WWE as the WWE fanbase wanted to see Bagwell on Raw and SmackDown. Unfortunately, his run was unbelievably bad as he rubbed virtually yeah. everyone up the wrong way. He would have a main event match oh, on Raw with Booker T and the match was so Ooh. poorly received, heavily influenced WWE's decision to cut ties with Bagwell. He would bad. also have a confrontation with Shane Helms which Bagwell was said to have instigated. Helms had oh, fit damn. into the WWE family perfectly and was oh, said yeah. to be insanely popular backstage, so naturally, Bagwell was going to take most of the heat. <laughs> According to Jim Ross on his podcast, Bagwell just wasn't the right fit for WWE. I guess not, well, bro. Buff just did, he thought he, he had a higher uh, opinion of his work than Vince did. And, oh. you know, I, I've become the bad guy because I'm the middleman. I'm the guy that delivers the bad news or the good news at times. But mm. I, don't, I don't hold any animosity to this very to this day on Mark bagwell whatsoever i saw where he he had a car wreck and it was involving oh, i think drinking maybe uh he just wasn't a good fit conrad and he you know uh that partying lifestyle you know we're trying to distance ourselves a little bit from that understandably so and and, I, and again you know Vince just didn't see the money in mark that mark saw it himself Number three, Nathan That's Jones. Tough. Nathan oh, Jones was scrub. given every tool imaginable to succeed. This Upon guy. debuting, he was immediately thrown into a storyline with The Undertaker, and this was a clear sign that WWE expected big things from Jones. The problem was that Jones just wasn't great in the ring, no. and whilst he had the size, he lacked the charisma, and fans just cheered him due to him being associated with Taker. Jones <laughs> was initially going to be set for oh a major WrestleMania match as he was going to team with the Dead Man to take on Big Show and A Train at WrestleMania 19. Yep. However, due to Jones not being ready for such a high profile matchup, WWE ruled it would be better off That's if Undertaker wrestled strange. in a handicap match instead. Eventually, Jones had enough of the WWE lifestyle, and during a tour of Australia, Jones decided to stay home and never return to the company. They That's had wasted crazy. so much of their resources on him, and it's crazy to think how much the Undertaker rubber would have benefited someone else. Bro, bro planned that out. He knew he was going back home. He was like, I'm not, I'm not going to go back with y'all. This, 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 this is a one-way trip, bro. I'm not going nowhere with y'all. But now imagine, bro, that handicap match was bad anyway. So imagine they actually had Nathan Jones wrestling at WrestleMania. That would have brought WrestleMania 19 down a lot. <laughs> With genuine <laughs> love and passion for pro wrestling. Number two, oh, yeah. Scott Steiner. In 2002, yeah. WWE decided to re-sign yeah. Scott Steiner. Steiner had made a name for himself as a single star Ooh, yeah. in WCW, and he was arguably one of the biggest names in pro wrestling. 
Steiner would instantly be positioned in the main event scene and yeah. WWE saw dollar signs with a feud with Triple H over on Raw. Unfortunately, the feud flopped in the worst way imaginable. Steiner's in-ring work had regressed to such a level that he could barely have passable matches and the crowd began to vocally turn on him. Steiner would go from that's, having a back-to-back -back world title matches on pay-per-view oh to being God, absent from WrestleMania so 19. Following they WrestleMania, so Steiner would be cemented in the mid-card where he would remain until he departed WWE the following year. And number one, Cain Velasquez. So Cain Velasquez's dumb. WWE run was doomed from the start as they made a complete blunder during his debut. He would debut just after Brock Lesnar had squashed Kofi Kingston to win the WWE title and this was a move which made fans insanely angry and WWE believed that debuting so Velasquez stupid. would make everything okay. Fans no. had no interest in seeing the former UFC star and they Not were collectively like bewildered why Velasquez was even signed to the company. Yeah. He would face Lesnar at the Crown Jewel pay-per-view and it lasted just over a minute before he tapped out. He was immediately released, meaning he only had one official match on pay-per-view. At one stage, WWE were planning to bring in Velasquez as a surprise in the Royal Rumble, yep, but in a bizarre move, rumor. Velasquez decided to tell everyone what WWE were planning, so they had no choice but to scrap the plans. Thank he was goodness. a complete waste of time and money, and it highlighted how out of touch WWE management were by Damn thinking me. that fans wanted to see Velasquez as a top star in the company. No. But there you have it, folks. Ten of the most. Yeah, man. I, I like Cain Velasquez, but it's just no. It was it, the way they brought him in was already a turnoff for a lot of people, and then on top of that, just the match itself was trash. So it's like to get him out of here. I remember that rumor for the Rumble too. I was like, bro, if they bring this guy back. To have him win the Royal Rumble, that would ruin that great Royal Rumble. It was, it was, to, in my opinion, the best Rumble ever. So that would have just ruined that. That would just completely ruin that. But that's my opinion on that, man. Y'all, let me know what y'all thought about the video. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Shout out to WrestleMania for the video, man. Uh, original link in the description if you want to check it out. Give him a like, man. Show him some love for his hard work right here. Um, yeah, I'll see you on the next one. Check out this video right here. YouTube thinks you enjoy. It. All right, I'm out of here. I'm gone.